Good day, everyone. It is my pleasure to discuss the topic information processing system. May this short discussion give you overview how learners process information and that will also uh, help you or give you idea how we can enforce learning in the classroom. Now let's start with the definition of the information processing system. It focuses on how people attend to environmental events, encode information, store new knowledge in memory, and retrieve it as needed. Basically, it is a generic name applied to theoretical perspectives dealing with the sequence and execution of cognitive events. The basic tenets of information processing system is that humans are processors of information the mind is an information processing system recognition is a series of mental processes and learning is the acquisition of mental representations the the information processing system there are uh, the information processing theorists challenge the idea inherent in behaviorism According to them, learning involves forming associations between stimuli and responses. On the other hand, information processing theorists do not reject associations because they postulate that forming associations between bits of knowledge helps to facilitate their acquisition and storage in memory. And what are the assumptions? It, uh, it occurs in stages that intervene between receiving a stimulus and producing a response. It is analogous to computer processing, meaning that human system functions similar to a computer, that it receives information, stores it in memory, and retrieves it as necessary. It also involved in all cognitive activities, which are perceiving, rehearsing, thinking, problem solving, remembering, forgetting, and imaging. This is the information processing model that incorporates processing stages. The information processing begins with a stimulus input, which is an example of that is the visual auditory. The stimulus input impinges on one or more senses, example, the hearing, sight, or touch. The appropriate sensory register, this part, receives the input and holds it briefly in a sensory form. It is here that perception occurs, which is the process of assigning meaning to a stimulus input. Now the sensory register then transfers to the information, uh, transfer the information to short-term memory, or the other name for that is the working memory. The working memory is a, uh, it, it only corresponds roughly to awareness or what one is conscious at a given moment. The working memory is limited in capacity and limited in duration. It only holds, it can only hold seven plus or minus two units of information. Now, this is the reason why most of our cell phone numbers are only limited in seven digits and also car plate numbers because this that is the maximum digit where our brain can easily memorize now the uh, since the working memory is only limited it needs the information to be processed over and over again it must be rehearsed and repeated because without rehearsal the information is lost after a few seconds now, while information is in working memory in this part, it is related then to uh, related knowledge in the long-term memory. Uh, this is now the permanent memory where once it is activated and placed to working memory, it can be integrated with a new information. That, uh, that is why the long-term memory is active. Now, under the information processing theories, we have the theories of attention that according to Broadbent 1958, it is a filter or the bottleneck theory. In uh, the theories of information, these are the incoming information 
is held briefly in a sensory system. Pieces of information are selected for further processing by the perceptual system. And then uh, this information, uh, when information not acted on by the perceptual system is filtered out, not processed beyond the sensory system. Attention is selective because of the bottleneck. Only some messages receive further processing. Now, how can we apply the theories of attention in the classroom? It is necessary that uh, prerequisite of learning, it is necessary that attention is given focus by the teacher because it is a prerequisite of learning. Now, lessons formats for young children should be kept short uh, since, uh, since giving a lot of information would be unnecessary since the capacity of the brain to memorize all or process all information will be forgotten in a short while. So uh, give a brief, concise instruction or lesson where you can be sure that those information will be stored in a long-term memory by the help, of course, of repetition. Now, suggestions for focusing and maintaining student attention. Teachers can use these following devices. Signals, movement, variety, interest in questions. And teachers can implement it in the classroom with the use of these devices. A signal, it is important that before starting the lessons, teachers must give signals to the students or when the teacher changes the activities. Now, these signals must be, uh, must be, uh, the learners must be able to recognize this. Now, the, the, these are the established routine that the teachers implement in the classroom and the students should be familiarized, uh, should familiarize the signals given by the teachers. And while doing the seat work, teachers must move around in order to ensure that students are really doing their seat work and it also will give them uh, encourage them to finish their work. And uh, teachers can also use uh, different teaching aids that are, of course, interesting. Teachers can also use gestures and do not speak in a monoton monotonous voice, especially when you are, uh, for example, you are, when you are telling a story, teachers can use gestures that the students can associate the story or the lines of the story by how the teacher show emotions or how the teacher show gestures. Then interest, introduce lessons that are stimulating and appealing to students because that will hold them their focus and encourage the students as well to formulate their own questions. Uh, this will be an effective test also for the teacher to know whether the students are uh, uh, the students understood the lesson if they are able to formulate questions out of the lessons given by the teachers. And uh, the teacher also must put emphasis or stress to them that they are also responsible for their own learning. The historical influences, um, the, there are two historical influences in the, the, mod in the modern information processing views. These are the contemporary information, uh, in, information processing views. These are the gestalt psychology and the verbal learning. Gestalt theorists stressed the role of organization in the perception and learning, while the verbal learning researchers used serial learning, free recall, and paired associate tasks. The perception or the pattern recognition, this refers to attaching meaning. Okay. According to Gestalt theory, learning is a cognitive phenomenon involving reorganizing experiences into different perceptions of things, people, or events. Meaningful perceptions and insight occur only through conscious awareness. And they also disputed that the idea that complex phenomena can be broken into elementary parts. And they also believed that perception was meaningful. Under the information processing system, we have the two-store memory model. This is the model that serves as our basic information processing 
perspective on learning and memory. Research on verbal learning is covered next to provide a historical backdrop. The verbal learning, this is um, a known work of Ebbinghaus who construed learning as a gradual strengthening of associations between verbal stimuli. These are the words or the non nonsense syllables. The three tasks, uh, the three types of learning tasks, which, uh, uh, which are the serial learning, repaired association learning, the free recall learning. Now learners recall verbal stimuli in, or, uh, in order in which they were presented. In the paired associate learning, one stimulus is provided for one response item. And for the free recall learning, learners are presented with a list of items and recall them in any order. And also under the uh, information processing system is the long-term memory. This is the part where the information, how the information is being stored and how, how it is being retrieved. And somehow some information can be forgotten. In declarative knowledge, we have, uh, these are the facts, beliefs, opinions, generalizations, hypotheses, attitudes about oneself, others, and the world events. And how are these uh, information can be retrieved in declarative knowledge? This uh, meaningfulness improves retrieval. If it's not meaningful, somehow learners can forget it. And then meaningful information will not be activated, uh, will not activate information in the long-term memory and will be lost unless students rehearse it repeatedly. That's why it is very important that teachers before starting a lesson, you uh, recall the past lessons or activate prior knowledge. And we have also the procedural knowledge, which is uh, how to perform cognitive activities. And its retrieval of procedural is uh, the information can be recalled if it is triggered by cues and associations in memory and the process of spreading activation activates and recalls relevant knowledge. Now forgetting. Forgetting refers to the loss of information from memory or to the inability to access information. So students will eventually forget the lessons if it is not um, repeated. If the skills is not repeated, then the, the students would somehow forget the skills that they have already learned unless it is, of course, repeated time and again. Okay, characteristics and distinctions of memory system. The, there are different types of memory. We have the short term, which is the working, uh, working memory that only holds seven items and it is very short. Uh, somehow it can be forgotten if it is uh, in the absence of rehearsal. In the long-term memory, these are the information stored in the long-term memory that are already learned by the students and it can uh, it's already stored permanently uh, it can only be acti uh, activated when cues are given episodic so these are the information that students can recall when events or times and places are uh, given then the semantic, this is the information in the long-term memory that involves general knowledge and concepts not tied to specific context. Then verbal, these are the procedures coded as meanings. And then visual, these are the information coded as pictures, images, and scenes. Now, students can easily recall information if pictures are given. What is the role of memory? Now, it is a key component of the information processing system. The classical model uh, postulated two, mem two memory stores, the short-term and the long-term memory. And memory receives information and through associative network link networks, link it with other information in memory. Okay, how can a teacher apply this uh, the, the, in organizing information by networks? Teacher enhance learning when they develop lessons to assess students to link new information with knowledge and memory. Information that is meaningful, elaborated, and organized is more readily integrated into long-term memory networks. 
and factual information to be learned can be elaborated by providing visual drawings and written details of the topic. That's why it's very, um, it, it's very important that teachers know how to use in, in distance learning, know how to use different apps that would encourage learning or the use of technology to encourage learning in the classroom or in our time, in our situation now, in our virt virtual classroom. Application, since memory or information can be forgotten, so how to minimize forgetting of academic learning? It, teachers sh should review important details or uh, infor uh, important information and skills periodically. Assign classwork and homework that we enforce previously learned material and skills and also review previously learned materials that is needed for mastering the new material. Now, before introducing a new topic, of course, or a new skill, it's important that we recall the previous lesson in order to ensure that the students are re ready to receive another information. And a summary. Important historical influences and contemporary information processing views are just psychology and verbal learning. And we have a two-store memory model in which information enters through the sensory registers and only a limited amount of information can be attended to. Information enters to the short-term memory or the working memory where it is retained through rehearsal and linked with related information in the long-term memory. That information can be encoded for storage in the long-term memory. Now, there are types of knowledge. These include the declarative, declarative, procedural, and conditional. Retrieval of knowledge depends on its being accessed in long-term memory. Failure to retrieve may result from decay of information or interference. Information may be best retrieved with cues present during encoding. Now, what is the impl implication for instruction? Information processing theories emphasize the transformation and flow of information through cognitive system. It is important that information be presented in such a way that students can relate the new information to known information, which is the meaningfulness, and that they understand the use of uh, the uses for knowledge. This point suggests that learning be structured so that it builds on existing knowledge and can be clearly comprehended by learners. Teachers also should provide advanced organizers and cues that learners can use to recall information when needed and that minimize cognitive load. Okay, that's the end of my discussion on um, information processing system. Thank you very much. I hope that I am able to share to you the, uh, I'm able to share to you the topic well. Good day.